Boy, it's all looking lovely and cozy. Up, up. They're all waking up. It's been raining. They were having a cozy lie down around the base of that chestnut tree. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb your cozinesses. Well, it's moving day today. You've done an excellent job on the ivy. So you can move out of here now. I've got to go and set it up though before I move you. Isn't that right, boys? Yeah, sweetie boys. You good boys. And breeding season is literally days away, you guys. No, sorry, not for you guys. No, you. Okay. Now, here's hoping the magic bucket does its trick with the boys. I've set up for you to go into the next paddock again. Come on, boys. They keep circling me. Come on, boys. There we go. Inca got them going. Java, Java, good boy. Good boy. They got where we want them to go. And there we go. The magic bucket. Java, good boy. Leave it be. Good boy. I've got a little bit extra for them. There we go. Okay, that job's done. Bear stays as far away as possible when there's anything to do with sheep. You heard his name. <laughs> anyway, Java's trying to play with time. There's a cross robin chatting up above. Oh, look. These are looking so beautiful. Look at that autumn color. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Look at the yellows and incredible reds. I, autumn is so beautiful. Anyway, yes, I know, you're so excited. You're so excited. Yes. Now, I want to look and see the work that the rams have done. Okay, the feed trough was right there. But they've done a really good job of cleaning out the thickness of the ivy. That was all very, very ivied. And look at how you can now see the understory and the tree trunks. And a lot of the old bulbs that my grandparents planted. They planted a lot of uh, cyclamen under here. And I haven't seen it for years and years and years. Look, there's somebody lives right here. There's somebody's home. You can see their path. The path is right there. So the sheep have done a magnificent job. Oh, look, they're hunting for whoever lives in here. Hey, it's probably a hedgehog. Leave it alone, guys. That's kind of like what a hedgehog hole looks like. So here we have, this is hawthorn. Oh, the leaves are coming away in my hand. So there's hawthorn, this is cherry. Got a good canopy of leaves above me. Oh, there's Hazel. This is Hazel. The cat is interested as well. No, Inca, leave the hedgehog alone. I would say there's probably hedgehogs in here. Hey, kitty. You beautiful kitty. Oh, and there's some nice kindling for me. Look at this. This is a nice bit of kindling as well. Oop, fell away. But there's a lot of nice kindling to start fires for my winter fires. I'm always kindling collecting this time of year. Now, what the sheep have done, I'll show you. Well, they've made it easier to get in here to access where the ivy is. Now you've got to remember, there's a huge amount of ivy in other locations. So I'm not depleting the area of ivy, just here. So I can get in now with the chainsaw and nip that ivy and pull it down. So usually what I do is nip it near the base 
and nip it at the browse line where the sheep were. Basically the big trunks with the chainsaw and then the little ones I just pull away with the clippers. But this will make it, you're standing, he's standing his hind legs on my boots. Uh, this will make, because this line of trees, I want uh, to be able to see through uh, and um, so that I can see the bulbs that my grandparents planted here. So, and I know that they're here. Can I not step on you, cat? Because along in here, I've been noticing cyclamen and things like that. So I know stuff is planted in there. It's a really good mixture. There's, um, there's a beech, then there's hazel and hawthorn, and, oh look, a plains tree. A, a member of the maple family. So, oops, and cherries. So it's a mixture of hazel, cherries, hawthorn, plains trees, uh, beech, etc. Oh, and a holly down here. I'd like to put more holly in there. But this increases the biodiversity. It's more likely that cow parsley will take off over here because I'd love to get this area full of cow parsley. Cow parsley is an incredible... Um, hey, excuse me, Inca. Leave that alone. Come on. Leave it alone. Come on. Good girl. Leave it alone. Cow parsley is a great summer food for pollinators or, or spring May food for pollinators. And then a couple of months later or weeks later, it's great for the seeds for birds. So I'm trying to get seeds going for uh, summertime birds. Oh, aren't you clever? That huge stick you're going to beat me with now. Yeah. <laughs> don't fight. Don't fight. Over a stick. I've got to watch out. I'm not hit by that stick. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> oh, what do you want? Yeah. Oh, it broke. Okay, and there's loads of snowdrops in here, which is all great for spring pollinators. Um, I've been planting over the years. So there's bulbs along that fence row that would be uh, planted by my grandparents. Anything from this cherry tree outwards, I've been planting and there's loads of snowdrops in here that I've been planting out over the last 10 years. And every year they're getting more and more. So, and I've just recently, last year, I was planting lots of snowdrops over there as well. So it's always, spring pollinators need pollen, so snowdrops is a really good one. Come on, with your stick. <laughs> what? 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 Oh, really? Look at that smiley face. Oh, that smiley face. Hey, ladies. You're only days away from meeting your boyfriend. Yeah. And they're all looking in fine fettle the brow of the hill. I was beginning to worry that my sheep had escaped into the neighbors because I couldn't find them anywhere in the field. But of course, they're in that hollow down there, sheltering under those beech trees. <laughs> That's one way to give oneself a fright. Look at them, lovely and sheltered. They don't want to be disturbed. It's raining. So they're feeling lovely and comfortable under there. But I want to walk and see what they're like because I fed them in the dark this morning. They're gonna hate me for coming over and disturbing them. But I like to have a look in the daylight when it's not a stampede for feeding. Oh, look, raindrop. There we go. All these stems are from chicory. 
They've eaten the leaves and left the stems. Hello, boys and girls. Oh, look, more of them are over there. Over there underneath the crab apple. I know, you just don't like seeing me coming through and disturbing you. The neighbor's cows that I thought were my sheep escaped are mooing at me. Yeah, everybody's looking fine. Let's go look at these. How are you, Crystal? You good girl. The beech trees above her are looking spectacular. Here are these guys underneath the crab apple. My grandfather loved planting crab apple trees and they're all over the farm. Hey girls and boys. How are you guys doing? Come on, stand up. There we go. Oh, this is lilac. And somebody said they thought they saw blood on her tail. It was a leaf. You can see actually some of the leaves are still there. And they look like, it looks like there's a spot of blood, but it's not. She's got a fine tail on her. No blood, just a red autumnal beech leaf. Look at the beech trees. Magnificent stand of beech trees we have here on the farm. Thank you to my distant relations. You hear those squeaky gates? Those are long-tailed tits. One of my favorite little birds. So, hey, um, excuse me. Excuse me, those are cows in the neighbor's field. You don't have to bark at them. I know they're there. Yes. Anyway, the squeaky birds that you're hearing are long-tailed tits. And they're a sweet little bird. Very fluffy-faced. He would be a long-tailed tit, because they're fluffsky-wuffsky like that. 